One of the biggest issues cover call officers face is how to repair positions when they go against you. In this video, I'm going to talk to a cover call position that went against me. I'm going to share with you all the details on how I repaired this cover call position in Realty Income, ticker symbol O, to help give you some ideas on how you can repair cover calls when they go against you. First, let me talk you through the spreadsheet to help you get an overall idea of how this trade played out. As a result of some put options that we've been selling over the previous several months, and realty income declining in price, we found ourselves in a position where we had sold the third Friday of November, 57 and a half to our put options. Well, those put options were in the money. And because of that, on November 1st, we were assigned 400 shares of realty income at $57.50 per share. The problem for us in selling covered calls is that at that point, Realty income was trading for around $48 per share. Typically, realty income is a very stable stock, so we tried to sell the $57.50 cover call options. Even if we went far out in time, we just weren't receiving much for that premium. You see, that strike price was almost 20% out of the money. So how could we collect some nice premium in a stock that we were assigned, but was trading over 16% below where we bought the stock at? Well, one of the nice things about realty income, which is one of the reasons why I like to trade in it, is that it is a monthly dividend paying stock. And right now, the stock price being down, we're actually getting a nice fat dividend. And here you see the dividends we received, 26 cents per share in January, also again in February, as well as March and April, and then the one we just received a few days ago in May. So overall, we're getting 26 cents per share for owning the stock every month. I like that. That helps you. Just over the past five months, we've pocketed $1.30 per share in just dividends, but we've pocketed a lot more than that. And here's how we did it. Remember, we bought the stock at $57.50 per share. When it was assigned to us, it was trading for around $48 per share. So if we sold that $57.50 cover call, it was really far out of the money. We wouldn't have got any premium for it, even if we went way out in time. So what I did here, as you see in the shaded area, I sold the $50 cover call option. For that, we got 46 cents per share. One reason why I felt comfortable doing this is because we had position sizing available if we needed some help in rolling that cover call option up as we rolled it out. You see, I can always sell additional cash care put options against Realty Income to help fund rolling that cover call strike price up. In fact, the whole time we were dealing with this cover call that had gone against us, as you see here, I was selling additional cash care put options. On November 21st, we sold the third five of January, $52.5 cash care put option for $1.08 per share. We did it again on January 17th. We sold the third five of March, $55 put option that got 68 cents per share. Now that one actually went against us, as you see here, because we had to buy it back for $2.87 per share on February 29th. But on that same day, we simply rolled that cash care put option strike price out and down to the September $52.5 strike price put options and walked with the credit. You see, we got $3.15 per share for that put option we sold that expires in September and it cost us $2.87 per share to buy back the one that expired the third Friday of March. But this video is about cover calls. I just want to show you that the reason why I felt comfortable selling a cover call to strike price below where we bought the stock at is because I had position sizing available to sell additional cash care put options against realty income, which would help fund roll those cover call strike prices up if we needed to. So remember, initially we sold the next month, December, $50 cover calls. We pocketed 46 cents per share for that. Well, in typical fashion for this market, the market whipsawed and those $50 cover calls were in the money. So fast forward to November 21st, we bought to close the December $50 cover calls and rolled them all the way out to March, but we were able to get that cover call strike price up to $52.5. So up by $2.50 per share. And you see we helped fund rolling that cover call strike price up by selling those put options. So it cost us $3.52 per share to buy back the $50 strike price cover calls that expired in December. We pocketed $2.76 per share for selling the third Friday of March $52.5 cover calls. So that would have ended up costing us cash out of pocket, but by selling these additional cash care put options, we ended up walking with the net credit for the overall trade. Fast forward to the middle of March, we bought to close the third Friday of March $52.5 cover calls for $1.07 per share. With real income looking fairly bullish at that point, I decided I wanted to roll that cover call strike price up if at all possible. So I went out two months so the third Friday of May, and I sold the $55 cover call. For that cover call, we got $1.13 per share, but we had to spend $1.07 per share to buy back that $52.5 cover call. So you ended up walking away with about six cents per share for this roll, but we got it up again by $2.50 per share. Fast forward to a few days ago, May 16th, and I decided I wanted to roll that cover call strike price up if at all possible in case realty income continued to go up. So I bought to close the third Friday of May, $55 cover call options, and that cost us 31 cents per share. Share. And we sold the September cover call option, but at that $57.50 strike price that we were initially assigned the stock at. For that, we were paid $1.05 per share. So you see, we pocketed over $0.70 cents per share 
for rolling this cover call strike price up from 55 to 57 and a half. And if it's called away from us, we'll be selling the stock for the same price as we bought it at. But how much have we collected during that time frame? During the time frame, the stock was really beaten down. Notice here at the bottom, I've done the math for you. During this time frame, the stock really went against us by selling and adjusting those cover call strike prices. We've collected just over $1,900 total for this position. Not bad for a position that went against us. In fact, at one point, the stock was over 16% lower than where we bought the stock at. So the idea I want to share with you here is how to handle a covered call when they go against you. You can try to sell covered calls, even if they're pretty far out of the money at the strike price that you were assigned or that you bought the stock at. But if the stock is going way down in price and you still believe in the company, the fundamentals are still good, you're still okay owning the stock, well, you might consider selling covered calls below the strike price you were assigned the stock at. You just want to keep in mind that if the stock were to reverse and go way back up in price really fast, those covered calls might go in the money it might be very difficult or even impossible if they don't have some help to roll those cover call strike prices back up. And that's one reason why when I take on initial position sizes, I do it with a half position size. I like to have my initial position size be two and a half to 3% of my overall portfolio. That leaves me an extra two to two and a half percent to repair the position like I had to do with realty income if it goes against us. In this case, when we were assigned that stock, we turn it into cover calls, I sold additional cash care put options when I needed help funding rolling those cover call strike prices back up. In the end, we've walked away with a nice profit, nice cash flow in this overall position. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stock or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Knowing how to repair positions when they go against you is a very important piece of knowledge you need to have if you wanna be a successful long-term stock and option trader. To get more tips on how to repair positions when they go against you, check out the video series, the link above in the description below entitled, How to Repair Option Positions. Until next time, Happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.